Yeah. Uh, uh, Honorable Chair and Co-Chair of this seminar, the learned panelists, Now, this title of this next presentation is the Bardas Diabetes Care Guidelines. You see, a lot of societies and organizations, including WHO, given us guidelines during this COVID time, where we have to stay home most of the time, and how to keep diabetes within a reasonable limit. The control of blood sugar, we know the, our Sir, late Professor, National Professor Ibrahim Sir, given three guidelines in, and everything is written in our guidebooks that discipline, drug and diet. That remains still that thing. Discipline, diet and drugs. I will hear, we are going to hear from Dr. Tarin Ahmad, what is the change in during, particularly during this COVID time, and what is the update on the guidelines of diabetes care? Let us see from him, and then any questions and answer sessions we'll discuss. And we hope every one of us will enjoy this deliberation. Thank you. Dr. Tarin, please start okay. your Thank you, sir. Moderator, can you hear me? Yes. Moderator, yes. can yes. you hear me? Yes, Dr. Tarim, we can hear you. Okay. Honorable Chairperson and distinguished guests, this is the last session, and actually this is the test of your patience. I'll be talking on Bada's Diabetes Care Guideline. Actually, I encompass mainly the backgrounds of this guideline formulation, and then I will touch the contents of the guideline. To analyze the background, we first try to see the magnitude of the problem. We all know diabetes is an epidemic and actually it is a pandemic. And it is recognized by the United Nations resolution, which recognizes 14th November as World Diabetes Day. And that in that resolution, the pandemicity of this disease has been described and described diabetes as a serious disease. If we look at the idea of figures, you can see the number of diabetic patients is rising. Every two years, you can see the climb of the figures from 415 million to 425, now 463 plus, And it will go up to 700 million in 2045. Actually, one in 11 adults has diabetes. The problem is that 50 by only 50 percent is diagnosed, and 50 percent remains undiagnosed. And the burden of diabetes is also given pressure by hyperglycemia pregnancy, and this pressure is very high in Southeast Asia region. And the Bangladesh figure, you can see, it is also climbing up from 6.9 million to 8.4 million at present, and it will go up 15 million in 2045. And don't forget the burden of pre-diabetes also, which includes IFG and IGT. If you look at BADA's studies at different times, you can see on the left side, you can see the in the factory workers, the study shows that 15.4% of prevalence of diabetes with IG10 and IFG, putting additional figures. And when we studied diabetes in preconception care population, we have seen a surprisingly high figure of 10.8% of prevalence together with IG10 and IFG. So the number is actually immense in our country. Then we try to look whether we can control diabetes. Actually, the answer is no. We cannot actually taking care of glycemia at a good level. 
if we look at the figures from 1988 to 2014 at various studies the our mean hba1c never gone below 7 which is the standard internationally we are always above 7 nearly 8 10 like this so our blood glucose control is never achieved though we are trying our best in cdb study or changing diabetes barometer the divisional hb1c figures are shown here and you can see the average hb1c is 9.8 average fasting blood glucose is 11 plus and average post prandial blood glucose is 16 plus which is very high if we consider international figures and in cdb study when the patients were included and insulin was started the good news is that early initiation of insulin has reduced hb1c to 1% so this is a very positive finding that if we start insulin early we can reduce hb1c satisfactorily diabetes is a serious disease it puts pressure through its complications and this is one of the most important reasons why we want to control blood glucose the diabetic complications include cardiovascular complications retinal complications kidney diseases neurological complications and food complications the cardiovascular complications poses the greatest risk for life nearly 50 to 70% patients with diabetes die of cardiovascular disease and you can see the prevalence rates of various complications and some complications are very high in type 1 diabetes though this diabetes is not very high in our country then we tried to look into the prescription pattern of the practicing doctors we have studied their prescriptions and we have seen that metformin is the most prescribed drug it is a very good thing to see that metformin is prescribed most in combination or alone and it is also stated in the guidelines that metformin should be the first drug if there is no contraindication so we are in that alignment and when we see saw the prescription pattern of insulin we have seen that premixed insulin is the mostly prescribed insulin nearly 77% patients are using premixed insulin doctors prescribe them probably for the convenience of patients it is very convenient for the patients to take this form of insulin and modern insulins are also becoming popular like analogs and pen use is also rising these all things will actually contribute us to formulate a guideline so we have seen all these things in a nationwide diabetes survey we have seen the practicing pattern of the doctors here we can see that the only lifestyle was advised in nearly 60% of patients this signifies that probably there is a delay in starting pharmacological agents in treatment of patients probably it is an unnecessary delay probably many of the physicians trying to control diabetes with lifestyle alone which may not be possible all the time or after a time you must have to add drug this is a finding from various diabetes centers of badas the prescription pattern of physicians here we try to see when a physician starts different agents if you look at hb1c column when the hb1c less than 8 most of the physicians prescribe lifestyle when the hb1c goes between 8 to 10 most physicians prescribe oral anti diabetic drugs and when the hb1c crosses 10 most of the doctors prescribe insulin this is more or less like international levels and when the physician switch from oral agents to insulin we saw that when the fasting blood glucose goes above 11 and when hb1c crosses 10 most of the physicians switches from oral agents to insulin 
then we have tried to know the knowledge and skill of the physicians you see the in gdm study we actually did this survey you can see physicians with good knowledge about gdm the percentage is 52.8% you may seem it high but if you think that these are all physicians this rate is not that high because the physicians should have much more high level of knowledge regarding management of diabetic patients in gdm also and this was published in a journal in public health this knowledge evaluation so before formulating a guideline we tried to see the magnitude of the problem by various studies field studies epidemiological studies we have tried to see our glycemic status we have tried to internet see the international papers to see the propensity of complications we have tried to see the, our physicians prescribe prescribing pattern or instincts and the knowledge and skill of the physicians and after compiling all the things and seeing that there is a variation in different guidelines especially those we mostly use the american diabetes care guideline american diabetic association guideline international diabetes federation guideline and aac american association clinical endocrinology guideline there are some variations which may sometimes confuse our doctors so we felt that we must have our own guideline so with the initiative of jointly of the diabetic association of bangladesh and national non communicable disease program director general health we are supported by novo nordisk we formulated a guideline and we published it in november 2019 though we could not distribute all the th centers or many places where we intended because of this pandemic situation and lockdown and probably we think or feel that probably will be very soon uploaded this guideline in our bardas website and in other websites and we will also try to hand over the published guidelines to various centers now i will touch very short the contents of the guideline we have elaborated the diagnostic cut offs in the guideline it is actually in line with standard guidelines of american diabetes association who ac there is nothing probably new in this guideline and regarding gestational diabetes and pregestational diabetes we also followed the current existing guidelines and for blood glucose control we actually followed the standard guidelines and we also relied on our own data gathered from our field surveys in our guideline we elaborately describe the various treatments from initiation from then follow up lifestyle medical nutrition therapy physical activity and various drug treatment and elaborate description of various drugs in tables and charts their side effects highest dose lowest dose when to increase the dose like this you will get everything in this guideline this is actually the lifeline of this but as guideline you need not look at this clumsy picture i'll make it simple you look at just at the top pro when the fasting blood glucose is less than 10 at initiation at diagnosis and hb1c is less than 8.5 or random blood glucose is less than 12 you can start metformin together with lifestyle we have incorporated these figures or cut off points from our own field surveys this is our achievement in this guideline then when diabetes is not controlled with metformin alone then we will switch over to next regimens which is elaborately described in this guideline when at diagnosis blood glucose is between 10 to 14 
H1C is between 8.5 to 10, and RBS is between 12 to less than 18. This is again from our own data. If the patient is asymptomatic, we will start metformin together with any other agent, preferably sulfonylurea. And if patient is symptomatic, we will always start insulin together or without metformin. This is from our own field survey data. And then if the blood glucose is not controlled, that is, if HbA1c still remains above 7, we will switch over to next therapy. And if at diagnosis blood glucose fasting is more than 14, HbA1c is more than 10 or equal to 10, and RBG is equal to more than 18, then we always start with insulin. And once insulin is started, we will add metformin at that time or later. And ultimately, if blood glucose remains high, we will continue insulin together with other agents. And if blood glucose gets well controlled at the lower dose, we may try again to shift to oral agents. Otherwise, insulin is the ultimate treatment. And this is the summary of that skeleton. That is, when blood glucose is 10, what to do? When blood glucose is 10 to 14, what to do? And when blood glucose is 14, what to do? This is the summary of that clumsy tables. We have tried to elaborately describe the screening, prevention, and treatment of all the complications, running from acute, like hypoglycemia and diabetic ketosis, and hyperglycemic hyperosmolar state, and chronic complications, nephroretinone, neuropathy, diabetic food, cardiovascular disease, including hypertension, though itself it no, is not a complication, but is an important accompanying disease of diabetes. We have tried to elaborately describe pregnancy. We have tried to describe diabetes in children, elderly, surgical management of diabetes, and then we described sick day management. We have incorporated Hodge and travel rules and Ramadan fasting rules. Everything are described in elaborate pattern. And diabetes is a preventable disease, all we know. And this is the most effective and least costly way to fight this pandemic. So we have incorporated prevention procedures or policies elaborately in this guideline, together with insulin injection techniques, injection sites, insulin storage materials. And we have also incorporate some case studies for our especially junior colleagues who can learn the management of diabetes cases from this guideline. So I am at the end of my presentation. This is our guideline. Our future plan is to incorporate all these materials into an application software. We have tried hard previously to make up an application software, but this is actually all you know, that this is not very easy, but we are trying our best to incorporate all the materials of this guideline to incorporate into an application software so that our physicians who are practicing diabetology can use this software and can easily manage diabetes at their practicing table. So thank you very much. Thank you for your patience hearing. Dr.